This is part three of a series of lectures on section 5.3 uh, for math 311, the course in linear algebra. We are continuing to talk about the Gram-Schmidt process for finding an orthogonal basis for subspaces. And uh, in the previous video we just did, that we, um, we applied this process for this, um, this basis of R3. We took these vectors, x1, x2, and x3 and we got um, an orthogonal basis uh, for R1 and R2 and R, R, for R3 and where this, where this was our U1, this was our U2 and here U3 and then we, from there we could easily uh, we, we, or we, we found an orthonormal basis just by dividing by the length just taking a vector and dividing by its length and we got this orthonormal basis. Okay, and so we got some numbers that were not very nice to look at, maybe, but um, we're going to see actually there are there are little we can do something kind of cool with this, um, because um, we can. So I'm really what I'm going to do is I'm going I copied this ortho, orthonormal basis on the next page, and I'm going to call this vector q1, this vector q2, and this vector q3. And again, this is orthonormal. Okay. Now we can actually um, write because this is an orthonormal. We can we can write um, well. We can write, take any vector in R three and write it as a linear combination of these. But actually, we can actually com compute the coefficients directly. In particular, we can write um, x one, x two, and x three in terms of these. Um, and in fact, so, so x one. Um, well, x1 can be written as a linear combination of, of these, but in fact, um, uh, we, we know how to do this. We can, we can basically, x1 will be a certain dot product times q1 plus a certain dot product times q2 plus a certain dot product q3 times q3. This was from uh, earlier, uh, when we started learning about orthonormal bases. Um, and the way we do that is, so we can actually write... Um, uh, x1 dot q1 if you do the calculations and maybe I should just write um, what x1 x2 and x3 are okay, we, yeah, this is um, 1 negative 1 1 2 1 3 and 1 0 oh, 2 Um, if you compute x1 dot q1, this is going. This is actually just going to be the square root of three. Um, x2 x2 dot q1 is going to be four four over square root of three, um, and x2 dot q2 is 26 over square root of 78. You can do all of these and verify them. Um, x3 dot q1 is square root of 3. Um, x2 dot q, um, I'm sorry, this is q1, right? x3 dot q2 is 12 over square root of 78. And x3 dot q3 is negative three, 2 over square root of 26. Okay. Um, so what we have is that x1 is really just the square root of 3 times q1. Okay, I think you can see that from up here. If you multiply this by the square root of 3, you get 1, negative 1, 1. Um, x2 is going to be uh, 4 uh, square root of 3 times q1 plus 26 over square root 78 times q2 and x3 will be uh, square root 3 q1 plus 12 over square root 78 q2 
plus negative 2 over square root of 26 Q3. Alright, well, long and short of that is that is if you take this matrix, if you take the matrix consisting of columns x1, x2, and x3, okay, this is now going to be a product of a of a of an orthonor orthogonal matrix and an upper triangular matrix. This is actually going to be um, uh, Q1, Q2, Q3 <laughs> times um, these coefficients here. Um, square root 3, 4 over square root 3. Square root 3, 0, 26 over square root uh, 78, 12 over square root 78, 0, 0, negative 2 over square root 26. Okay, so this is actually going to be um, 1 over square root 3, negative 1 over square root 3, 1 over square root 3. And you'll see that, so this is orthogonal, orthogonal matrix. And remember, an orthogonal matrix is a matrix where the columns are an orthonormal set. And this, is, of course, is um, invertible and upper triangular. Um, it's obviously upper triangular. And it's uh, and it's invertible because we can see the eigenvalues will be right on the diagonal, and none of, none of them are zero. So um, the reason why it's upper triangular is because of this, because the x1 is strictly in the span of q1, x2 is strictly in the span of q1 and q2, and x3 is strictly in the span of q1, q2, and q3. And the reason for that is x1 is strictly in the span of u1, and so on, right? And that was from the Graham Schmidt. And it turns out we can do this with any matrix whose uh, whose columns are linearly independent. We can just use the, do the Gram-Schmidt process, get an orthogonal basis, get an orthonormal basis, and then get get an ortho from there get direct get an orthogonal matrix and an invertible upper triangular matrix. Um, just by doing these calculations, that will give us the values of the upper triangular matrix. So this gives us um, the what we call the Q. This is called the QR factorization. Okay, we can do this with any n by n matrix with linearly independent columns. It says that A equals QR, um, where Q is the um, n by n matrix with the orthonormal columns. Okay, and this 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 is so Q is coming from the orthogonal the orthogonal basis or orthonormal basis. of the span of the columns of A, whatever they are. And then R is just, R comes from the linear combinations of, you know, right, writing each, from writing uh, each column as linear, as a linear combination of the orthonormal basis. Vectors. So you can do that with any um, any matrix. Um, maybe I'll just do one example 
uh, one, two, three, four. Um, if we wanted to find that, I did those. I did that here. And let me just let me just pause the video here. Okay, found it. Um, so basically, in this case, um, x1 would be 1, 3, and x2 would be 2, 4. These are obviously linearly independent because they're not scalar multiples of each other. Um, and then we, we could do Gram-Schmidt, first of all, on this. So, so u1 would be just 1, 3. Um, u2 uh, would be 2, 4 minus the dot product of 1, 3, 2, 4 over 1, 3, 1, 3 times 1, 3 from Graham Schmidt. This will be 2, 4 minus 14 tenths, 1, 3. And if you do the calculations and simplify, this becomes 3 fifths negative one fifth and we can just take this as three negative one and big surprise three negative one is orthogonal to one three um, and um, so this is this would be so this would be our u2 and then q1 then would be the length of this vector is 10 as is this vector so Q1, this would be 1 over square root 10, 3 over square root 10. And Q2 would be 3 over square root 10, negative 1 over square root 10. Um, and you can check that 1, 3 dot Q1 is what can't read my writing. It's going to be square root 10. 10 over square root 10, which is square root 10. Um, and then 2, 4, dot product 1 over square root 10, 3 over square root 10, would be 14 over uh, square root 10. We'll leave it like that. And then 2, 4, dot 3 square root 10, negative 1 square root 10, would be uh, positive 2 over square root 10. Okay. So we get that um, 1, 2, 3, 4 can be written as this orthogonal matrix This matrix is square root 10, 14 over square root 10, 0, and 2 over square root 10. Okay. So orthogonal and upper triangular. Okay. So this would be your this is your Q and here's your R. Okay. Alright, and that will this will be this will be useful in upcoming sections. Okay, but the main thing I want you to be able to do is use the Gram-Schmidt process to this. These, 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 this, is, this section is really just computational, so just get some practice with the exercises in the textbook. And I will see you next time.